In Fraser Bay, a new site was bestowed upon onlookers from shore. An expedition ship, Viking Octantis, released a weather balloon, allowing for a unique look into the atmosphere and weather patterns for the area. Every single day, almost a thousand weather balloons take to the skies from hundreds of launch sites around the world, including over 100 from the United States. This ship is uniquely designated as the only commercial vessel that's also an official weather balloon launch station partnering with the National Weather Service, allowing it to launch in some extremely remote parts of the world, including Antarctica and the Great Lakes. So we've launched weather balloons from our top deck, which is deck seven. We fill them with helium from our gas store, which is on that deck. And then we carry them as a team aft um, to where we have all our guests standing and waiting. We explain all of the aspects of the weather balloon and then do a big countdown to release it into the sky. Five, four, three, two, one. The data from the launched weather balloon is displayed here on the screen behind me, and the onboard scientists interpret the data, and it's interesting because much of the data that has been collected is very, very useful as a lot of these weather balloons haven't ever been released in some parts of the world, including in portions of Antarctica. So what we're looking at is we're looking at a graph that shows sea level up to altitude mm -hmm. and a variety of data parameters that have been coming off the balloon. So if we look at this legend here, we'll see we have pressure, wind direction, wind speed, humidity, and temperature. This is quite a noisy image, but it gives you an insight in the raw data to coming from uh, the balloon. And this information is packaged up and sent to the National Weather Service for analysis, and indeed can be used for interpretation on board, both from our guests in terms of sharing this information and the scientists. This launch was the highest that the ship had ever done, reaching over 30 kilometers into the atmosphere. With partnerships including with NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, as well as Cambridge University, among others, the continuous data is sure to be put to good use.